We are kicking off today part two of our series that we're actually calling Four Choices. That's kind of an unusual title, right? But there are all kinds of choices that we can make in life. But what we're learning throughout this series is we're learning how to take what I would consider to be good intentions, but we're turning those into wise decisions. And there's all kinds of choices we can make in life, right? I mean, we could be here until Jesus comes back talking about the different types of choices that we can all make in life. But I have chosen four specific choices. Last week, we learned about the choice of taking our faith public through water baptism. You saw in the video just a moment ago the opportunity next Sunday evening, 5 o'clock, Sherry Down Park. It's going to be an amazing time. I think we've got close to 25 people that have already said we want to be baptized. And by the way, I'm going to be doing uh, another uh, orientation. If you would like to be a part of that, you can join me this Tuesday night. We're actually doing a Zoom call. So you can, uh, at your convenience, you can Tap into us uh, as we kind of walk through some of the details and logistics for our beach baptism. Or, or you can meet me as well next Sunday. But we would love for, to know if that is an opportunity for, for you, for your family, members that you would like to see them take that all-important step. And so let me encourage you to do that. Today, we are actually in part two. And what I want to do for a few moments, obviously because we're kicking off our summer season of life groups, I want to talk with you about the choice of having the right connections in your life. It's so, so important. It's the choice that we get to make when it comes to having the right connections in our lives. In fact, I would be safe to say the most important decisions that you will ever make in your life, hands down, are tied to your relationships. In fact, you are who you are and you are where you are in this stage and season of your life probably because of the relationships or the influence of those relationships that have been made on your life, whether they've been good or perhaps whether they've been bad. In fact, it's been said that your net worth is determined by your net work. And I think that's so important that we think about the network of people in our lives, those close associations, those people who in many ways have a tremendous voice into our lives, people who have a strong connection into our hearts. How many of you, I'm just curious, have ever uh, seen, maybe you've played the old school game by the name of Kerplunk? Let me see your hand. You've, You've heard of the game? Come on, there's only a handful of you. How many of you have never heard of Kerplunk? You've never heard of Kerplunk. Y'all need to go to Walmart today and buy the game of Kerplunk. It's one of the all-time greatest. There's a picture. Our team's going to put a picture up here. So you probably have seen, this is like a homemade version of it, but you, you probably have seen it. You know, you're probably thinking, oh, yeah, I remember that. I've seen that. But here's the thing about this game, Kerplunk. It's amazing. It's a lot of fun. It's also very, very nerve-wracking. And the object of the game is, as you can see, it's, these marbles are basically supported. They're held up by all these little sticks, right? And so the object of the game is you try to pull those sticks out without the marbles falling and collapsing into the tray, or in this case, you know, onto the ground. So that's the reason why it's nerve-wracking, because as you start pulling more and more of the sticks out, those marbles become more and more fragile, more vulnerable, until eventually somebody pulls a stick out, and then what happens? Kerplunk. All the marbles come crashing down. Well, unfortunately and sadly, that is a picture of what happens in a lot of people's lives. And especially when it comes to post-pandemic Man, alive with the last 24 months, I mean, I think we would all agree to the fact that perhaps we know somebody, we know maybe a family member, maybe a a business associate or coworker, somebody that we know, a neighbor, maybe there's somebody in your circle of friendships who unfortunately have experienced a kerplunk in their life, in their marriage relationship, something mentally, emotionally that maybe just went south. And because of that, chances are, The reason why that happened was because they didn't have a support system. They didn't have people in their lives that were really close to them 
who are holding them up and supporting them through that vulnerability, through that fragile situation that they were walking through. And that's the reason why so many people, unfortunately, they fall and they go kerplunk in their life, spiritually, relationally, morally. And it's because of the wrong associations or perhaps the lack thereof that's holding them together in their life. And so today, one of the most important choices that we can make in our life is to associate ourselves with the right kind of people that can help hold us up. Amen? Man, we all need people like that in our lives. And so with that said, Paul the Apostle was challenging the Christians living in Rome with this verse, with this challenge in Romans chapter 12, verse 5. He said, even though we are many individuals, Christ makes us one body and individuals who are, notice, who are connected to each other. In the Passion Translation, I love what Mike was saying a few moments ago. <laughs> All the different translations. What I just read to you is called the GW. That's the God's Word Translation. Now I'm going to read you the same verse from the Passion Translation. TPT. I love that particular translation. In Romans 12, 5, in the Passion Translation, it says it this way. And so it is in the body of Christ. For though we are many... We've all been, notice, mingled into one body in Christ. This means that we are all vitally joined to one another with each contributing to the others. What Paul, in essence, was saying is this. If we are followers of Jesus, if Jesus is at the core, if he's at the center of our, of our hearts and our lives, well, guess what? We have not only the Holy Spirit living in us, but we have brothers and sisters in Christ who have the Holy Spirit living in them, and therefore we are all connected spiritually. We are all joined together with one another. We are in a place of being mingled together and because we're joined together, we're connected and we're mingled together, we are also contributing to one another. Why? So that we can support one another. So we can hold one another up because of who lives within us and who's at the center of our lives. So you guys getting this? This is huge. This is huge. And so Paul is challenging us with a very basic principle when it comes to the health and the well-being and the growth of our personal lives, and especially when it comes to our relationships. So here are four benefits of being connected. Okay, number one is this. We connect for our health. We connect for our health. In fact, there was a study done by the Department of Health that I found to be very interesting. It says that when you are dis disconnected from others, we are two to three times more likely to die an early death. Four times more likely to suffer emotional burnout. Five times more likely to suffer from clinical depression. And ten times more likely to be hospitalized from mental or emotional disorders. That's just the physical health aspect, the mental and the emotional aspect of our lives when we are disconnected. To put it in another phrase, people go per kerplunk in their lives when they are not connected, especially when it comes to their health and overall well-being. God made us for deep connection. That's the reason why in the very beginning when God created man, he said it is not good for man to be alone, right? So what did he do? He created a helper. He created a companion. He created Eve. And so therefore, in the same way, God created us not only to have connection with him, but to have connection with one another. Connecting with others is something that we literally cannot live without. And so we have a vertical, vertical connection 
That's between us and God. But we also have a horizontal connection between us and others. And that's the picture of the cross, right? Jesus died. And as he's connecting with the Father, Father the, vertical, the vertical, he's also connecting in the horizontal from the standpoint of he died for all humanity. So he fulfilled the father, Father's will, but he also died so that we could be restored, so that we could for, be forgiven, so that we could ultimately be connected to a spiritual family that is going to live forever and forever in a spiritual home called heaven. Amen? Aren't you thankful for that? So when you think about it, in Ephesians 4 verse 16 says it this way. Under his direction, that's Christ's direction, the whole body is fitted together perfectly. As each part does its own special work. It helps the other parts grow so that the whole body is, notice, is healthy and growing and full of love. So spiritual and relational connection, listen to this, is vital to our emotional health. And therefore, if we're going to be emotionally and mentally healthy, we've got to stay spiritually and relationally connected, not only to the Lord, but stay relationally connected and spiritually connected with one another within the body of Christ. That's the picture of a healthy life, is when we're connected to God and we're connected to each other. Healthy things grow. You ever thought about that? You show me a healthy marriage, I'll show you a growing, thriving marriage. You show me an unhealthy marriage, and I'll show you a marriage that is declining, that is becoming more and more divided. You show me somebody who is walking and living spiritually and in healthy relationships, and you will see a person who is growing and flourishing in a lot of areas in their lives. Healthy things grow. Number two, we connect for our growth. So not only do we connect for our health, but Paul is challenging us to grow even for the sake of our own spiritual growth as well. In Colossians 2, 19, he said it this way, for we are joined together in his body by his strong sinews, and we grow only as we get our nourishment and strength from God. So the Christian life, listen to this, is not just a matter of believing. And don't misunderstand what I'm about to say, because believing is only, is only half of it. It's one thing to believe, but it's another thing to belong to the body of Christ. You see, there are a lot of people who say, oh, I believe in God. I believe in Jesus. But my bigger question is, is are they growing? Are they developing? Are they maturing in their spiritual journey? Well, I can guarantee you this. It is virtually impossible to reach your full spiritual potential and grow and become all that God created and destined for you to be alone. Even the Lone Ranger had Tonto to give him a little high five from now and then. Now and then you know what I'm saying? I mean, we, we need people in our lives to grow. It's hard to grow by yourself. And so we have to be connected to the body of Christ in order to grow. It's interesting that word sinews is something that Paul identified. You say, well, what are sinews? Well, that's basically our muscles, Right? And we all know what happens, you can probably tell, that I should not, you know, look the way I look because I have not been doing biceps the way I should be doing biceps. And so, as a result of me slacking in the area of lifting weights, man, I'm like the, the Pillsbury Doughboy, you know. I, I, you know I, I need to work out more. I need to grow my muscles, right? Same is true in our spiritual lives. You Get out of it what you put into it. Come on, somebody. I'm not just preaching to myself today. Come on. Somebody's got to get in the gym. we got to start working out. 
Because we got to not only get in the, in the, in the, in the real physical gym, but we got to get in the Lord's gym. Amen. We got to get in, into the Word of God because God wants us to grow. He wants us to develop and mature to get strong news spiritually in our lives. Why does the body, excuse me, why does the Bible use the word body? Let me tell you the reason why. It uses the word body to illustrate what the church really should be about. In other words, the body, when the body is connected, is designed to what? To grow. So therefore, as long as my leg is connected to the body, it grows. It's healthy. But when the leg is disconnected from the body, what happens? It dies. It shrivels. And the same is true when it comes to our spiritual lives. I, I'm always amazed, you know, when I talk to people and uh, they'll say, um, I'll ask them the question, say, hey, where do you go to church? And they'll say, well, I don't, yeah, I don't really go to church. I say, oh, man, I'm sorry to hear that. Where, you know, or, well, let me ask you this. Do you know the Lord? Are you a Christian? Oh, yeah, I'm a, I'm a Christian. I'm just not into the church thing. I'm like, well, that's an oxymoron. That doesn't even make sense. Biblically, biblically speaking, that doesn't even make sense. Paul is emphasizing if you say that you believe in Jesus, but you are disconnected from the body of Christ, the church, are you for real? How in the world do you expect to grow? That'd be like me saying, oh, I want to I play in the NFL. I mean, I want to be Tom Brady. I want to I win the Super Bowl. I want to play in the NFL. But I don't want to necessarily be committed or joined to any specific team. You know what I'm saying? I just want to play in the NFL. That doesn't make sense. No. God has designed the local church to be the local body, a spiritual family where people not just believe but belong. They are connected. They are joined together. And because they are connected and they are joined, guess what? We all have the opportunity to grow and to flourish. Why? Because we are growing together because we're connected to one another. And that's all a part of God's plan. In 1 Corinthians 12, verse 27, it says it this way. Now all of you together are Christ's body, and each one of you, notice, is a separate and necessary part of of it. I love that. You know, one of the things that I enjoy the most about being a part of a small group is the eclectic, unique, different type of people and personalities that are in the group. And it doesn't matter whether you got, you know, three people or 13 people in a group, it's always fascinating to me because we're all wired differently. We all see things from a different perspective, a lot of it is because we see things through the lens of our personalities. How many of you have ever heard of the Enneagram? Ever heard of the Enneagram? Man, y'all need to get out more. Y'all are like, uh, man, you haven't heard of Kaplunk. You haven't heard of the Enneagram. You know, read some books. You know, do some stuff. Learn. Grow. So anyway, Enneagram. Come on, some Google that. Y'all go see everybody's on their phones like, Enneagram, what is that? Enneagram, what's like a personality test? And there are, it's, it's a number system. So there are nine numbers in the Enneagram, right? And so it's funny because when you're in a small group environment, you can always tell who the eight is. They're just calling you out. You know what I'm saying? Or you can always tell, you know, who the, who the uh, nine is. The nine is, you know, they're, 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 just, they're always wanting just to help serve. And they're always just wanting to, you know, you know, make peace and, you know, make sure everybody's happy in the group. And, you know, and then, and, then you, and, then you, and then you got the number one who's always there. And they was like, you know, so-and-so was late. And, you know, somebody forgot to do this. They, they didn't do that. And, you know, they're, they're kind of pointing out all the things that didn't go right. You know, that's, that's typical one. And then you got, you know, then you got the seven who shows up. And they're like, hey, everybody, how's it going? Man, it's so great to see everybody. And they, I mean, they're just like a tornado. They just went into the, the room. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's awesome. 
I love being a part. That is the diversi diversity within the body of Christ because we all bring unique perspectives and personalities into our groups, into the body of Christ. That's the beauty of also being on a team. Because you know what? You don't want somebody who's an introvert, somebody who's terrified of being around people or coming up on stage. You don't want somebody who's an extreme introvert to be out front as a greeter. Okay? That freaks them out. But at the same time, you don't want somebody who is a very high energy people person who's all about connecting with people to be stuck in some cubicle behind a, com behind a, a computer. It'll drive them crazy. You see, we're all wired different. And that's the reason why even though we are one body, we all make up different parts of the body. Why? Because it's a part of our growth. Which leads me to the third benefit and reason why we need to be connected to the right people. And that is also we connect for our effectiveness. I love a quote that I saw recently by John Maxwell. And I think he probably originally got this from Mother Teresa, or at least the first part of it. But it says these words, one is too small of a number to achieve greatness. And then I think this is what he added to it. No accomplishment of real value has ever been achieved by a human being working alone. Again, we're better together. We like to say it this way here at Rethink Life. Let's do great things together. Because we can't do it alone. We need one another. We need each other in order to achieve all that God has for our lives. Paul said it this way in Ephesians 2.10. For we are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. You've heard me say this many, many times, and I'll say it again because it's worth repeating. Listen, God made us for ministry. You see, your career is what you get paid for, but your ministry is what you were made for. There are just certain gifts that God has given you that he wants you and he needs you to use to help grow the body, to help be more effective when it comes to advancing the purposes of God, for the church to flourish, for the church to be healthy and strong, to take, out, to take back more turf that the enemy has tried to steal. Listen, the gates of hell shall not prevail the local church and the body of Christ when it's doing the very thing that God has called it to do. And so when you think about it, come on somebody, when you think about it, we are only as effective as a church as we are as effective when it comes to the people serving in our church on the different teams. I like to say it this way, if you are not serving, you are swerving. Because we're missing out, we're swerving outside the will of God. We are made for ministry, we are a part of God's workmanship. I love that. On July the 16th, we are going to be joining forces with literally hundreds of churches all over the U.S. on something that has now become known as National Serve Day. So I want to encourage you right now just to put that you know, in your Google calendar or whatever calendar you use there, just mark the date for that Saturday, July the 16th. And that's really what we're doing. And the reason why we're doing a short summer season for life groups is because a part of our serve day serves as kind of like the culmination, if you will, of everything leading up to that day. And we're going to have a lot of different projects and organizations and, and groups that we're going to be coming alongside and serving with. And we're going to do everything we can to be the brightest light that we can be, the saltiest salt that we can be in our community and in our city as we come together and as we serve and as we advance the gospel and as we help impact our community and our city with the hope that is found in Jesus Christ. And can you imagine when the body of Christ, the capital C church from all over the U.S. is coming together at one time 
man, they're going to be going out into their cities and in their communities. Man, what an incredible day that will be when the devil turns and runs for his life because the body of Christ, the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, has taken back what the enemy has tried to steal. And so what an awesome, awesome opportunity that is. And so we would encourage our life groups to embody those opportunities. In other words, own those opportunities. And maybe you have a connection with an organization here in our community or in our city that you might say, hey, this group really could have, you know, there, there could be an, a great way for us as a church to have an impact on this organization. Maybe there's a handful of people that could come and serve alongside them on that day. Listen, whatever organization that maybe has just popped in your head, a group or maybe a, a ministry that needs some form of assistance and help and encouragement, you let us know. Hey, go to the Connect booth on your way out and say, I know of this organization, I know of this ministry that we as a church could really bless on that day by coming alongside and being the hope and being the light of Jesus to those in need. And that's our vision. That's our heart. That's what we want to do, especially on that day of July the 16th. The fourth reason why it's so important that we make the right choice of being connected to the right people is not only for our health and not only for our growth and not only for our effectiveness, but also for our support. I love what Ecclesiastes chapter 4 verse 9 says. Two people are better than one because they get more done by working, what? Together. Not alone. Together. And in verse 10, it says it this way. If one person falls, if one person goes kerplunk, the other can reach out and help. But people who are alone, when they fall, are in real trouble. My wife, Michelle, and I, we have been walking through some challenges with somebody that we're very, very close to. And it just is one of those situations where on the outside looking in, it's like, what could we do? How could we help? Because often what we see is we see their struggle. But we also see their struggle in their aloneness. And they're trying to fix their own situation, their own problem. They're trying to somehow, some way, resolve their own challenge alone. And it breaks our heart because we know that that's just one example of countless others who often when we hear of maybe the fact that they went through a struggle, they went through a season or a hardship, and all of a sudden maybe something that obviously never even crossed their minds, something they never saw or predicted would ever, ever happen, suddenly happens. Maybe it's a divorce. Maybe it's a wayward son or daughter who rebels. Maybe it's just a situation or circumstance, a crisis they never saw coming. Maybe it was with their health or maybe it was just through a, an emotional or mental season in their life where they were just going in a downward spiral into a deep, dark, endless hole from their perspective where they see as though there is no light at the end of the tunnel and our hearts go out to those who experience such tragedy. And the bigger question is, who do they have to call upon? Who is there to help pull them up when they have fallen down? Who is there to reach down and to pick them up and to pull them out from the pit from which they find themselves. Paul was right. We are joined together. We are mingled together. We belong to one another. And we are stronger and we are healthier. We are more effective when we do life together. What is one of the most important choices you could ever make in your life? It is the choice to surround yourself, to be connected with the right people in your life. Because when that happens, you're going to be healthy, 
you're going to grow, you're going to be more effective, and you're going to feel supported in every area of your life. That's God's plan. And we're here to be a part of that plan. So let's do what God has called us to do. And let's be what God has called us to be. And that is a body that is joined to one another to bring glory to him and to advance his purposes. Amen? Let's bow our heads together in prayer. As we uh, close our eyes and bow our heads for a moment, those of you that are watching us today, I want to invite you to do the same Can I just encourage you, wherever you are, whatever it is that maybe you're going through today, maybe you feel that you are maybe that example of somebody who's just going through a difficult season, and you feel disconnected, you feel alone, you feel in many ways isolated through the stuff that you're walking through. In just a moment, we're going to have our prayer team, and we're going to even ask others who want to come and just make themselves available to pray with people. We're going to invite you to come and take advantage of a time where we can just pair up, where we can pray with you and pray for you and pray over you. That's the reason why every week we always ask our prayer team just to come and make themselves available here at the front because we want to have that opportunity to stand with you so you don't feel alone in your struggles. Some of you here today, maybe what's missing in your life is just strong connections and relationships. Maybe you've often thought about, maybe you've often talked about the opportunity to connect, to be a part of, to join a life group. And you know, we're all guilty of having good intentions, right? We know that perhaps it's something we could do, we should do, we ought to do. But still often what happens, the disruptions of life, the busyness of life, sabotage the opportunities that God has placed right in front of us. And you know what? Maybe today you're thinking, this is my opportunity, this is my moment. I just want to encourage you to take a relational risk today have a conversation with one of the life group leaders it's not too late to start a group if you have an interest in starting a group being a part of a group then I would invite you to go to our connect tent or go to our welcome party here in just a few moments and the last thing I want to share is this some of you here today maybe what's missing is that vertical relationship between you and God Maybe there's never been a moment in your heart where you have surrendered. You've literally have opened up your heart to Jesus and invited him to be the Lord of your life. If that's never happened to you, if you've never surrendered your life to Jesus and making Jesus the Lord of your life, I just want to invite you right where you are to pray this prayer and invite Jesus Christ to forgive you of your sin and to save you spiritually in your life. You can pray something like this. Just say, dear God, I confess to you that I am a sinner. I turn from my sin. Jesus, today, by faith, I'm inviting you into my life to forgive me, to save me, and to change me. Thank you, Jesus, for saving my soul. If you happen to have prayed that prayer today, would you do me a huge favor? Would you let me know by just holding up your hand high toward heaven today saying, hey, count me in. Count me in. I just prayed that prayer. And it was for real. I meant business in my heart. Any others? Any others? It's awesome. It's awesome. In just a moment, I'm going to invite our prayer team to come and make themselves available here at the front. And we're going to sing a a song here shortly after... Uh, we get ready to to prepare for our offering. But let me just say this. I want to invite those of you that maybe have prayer needs. You want to talk with somebody. Maybe you prayed that prayer. and You would like to learn more about what that truly means in your life. We have a little booklet we'd love to put in your hand. And so we're going to ask you to take that step and allow us to talk with you, pray with you, and walk through life's most important decisions. Father, we thank you for these here today. God, thank you for how you've moved in our hearts, how you've 
challenged us. And God, how you've spoken to us today. And God, I pray as we come close to you. God, we ask that you would come close to us. We pray this today in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Come on, somebody. Let's give Jesus all the praise he deserves. Amen. Well, I'm going to invite those of you there at your, uh, at your seats, if you would, uh, to take out the Connect card. And as you are preparing uh, there, I just want to encourage you to fill out this card today. If you are a guest with us, don't forget, I want to encourage you to go to the Connect tent. Uh, our life group leaders are going to be available at the tent on the inside there in the lobby. And once again, if you would like more information about those groups, okay, put a check mark down below that says, I'm interested in, okay, and put small groups. If you're interested in learning more about those small groups, you can also go online, but they will be available there at the tent as well. Maybe you'd like more information about baptism, or maybe you'd like to sign up to be baptized, okay? Put a check mark there. This week, we'll send you the link, okay, to the Zoom call that we're going to have on Tuesday night. We walk you through all the details you need to know to go to the beach next Sunday for our beach baptism. And of course, if you prayed that prayer and you invited Jesus in your life, we want to encourage you to fill that out, complete that. We have some books that we want to, a Bible we'd love to put into your hand. And so in just a moment, as we take up the offering, and as we stand, as we worship, our prayer team is going to be here available as well. Let me just say today, as we prepare our hearts and continue in this time of worship, this summer is a very important season in our church and the reason why is because so often so often when people scatter and you know vacations and different things going on you know there's an old saying that says out of sight out of mind <laughs> and I pray that would never be true in our hearts as believers because the Bible says where your treasure is there your heart and your thoughts would be also and that's one of the reasons why we give but it's also one of the reasons why I sent something out uh, on Friday to our church family just as a gentle reminder to say you know what as we go out on vacation as we're traveling as we're doing different things let's automate the important let's keep the main thing the main thing by putting Jesus first in every area of our life including our finances what that means is is maybe you want to go online and give faithfully in that way set up a what we call a recurring opportunity to give that's what my wife Michelle and I do we just set it up, it's recurring, and therefore we stay faithful and we're up to date in that area of giving the tithe to honor the Lord because it is our act of worship. Even though we may be physically gone, we're continuing to worship and we're continuing to give and we're continuing to partner with the church to be all that God has created it to be. And so let me encourage you today to be faithful in this way. And so today I want to pray over the offering and let's pray that God will continue to provide. He'll continue to allow the church to flourish, to grow, to be healthy, strong. As we continue to advance the kingdom, as we can continue to do ministry, and as we prepare for the fall for everything that God has planned for us. We're excited about what God is doing. Let's pray together. Father, we're grateful for the privilege today to be able to give, to be able to serve, to be able to connect, to join together. Lord, we're excited for our welcome party that's getting ready to happen over in the cafeteria. For those that are wanting to connect with the church, wanting to take advantage of the opportunity to connect to a local spiritual family known as Rethink Life. Lord, we're excited for what you're doing this summer through our life groups. We're excited for the outreach opportunities that we have coming up. Lord, we just want to ask that today you take what we give, you'll use it, multiply it, God, to help your church to be healthy and strong and to advance your purposes to share the gospel to a needy world. We pray this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 